Well, I've lost tube. It's uh, 76 degrees here in Lehigh, Utah, heading for a high of 87. Um, that's actually a cool front for here. We've had it 100 degrees um, for the last several weeks. And um, so we always say, whoa, cold front. It went from 100 degrees down to 87 degrees. Um, but it's been rather pleasant because I've been able to go back and do things in the garden more and with a little bit of cloud cover and not such a penetrating heat. So anyway, that's our cold front for right now. I hope the rest of you are enjoying your summer, what's left of it. I know a lot of the kids have gone back to school, but um, it's still summertime feeling around here. Anyway, I want to say uh, hi to you. Um, I'm Colette, the Highway Stitcher, and I'm here to give you my um, stitching ramblings from the highway and at home. Okay, on to some life updates. Um, I've had to turn this off and on and I'm going to have to edit together. I'm still having some issues with this microphone that I'm working with. And sometimes when I do it um, and then I unplug it and play back, there's no sound coming out at all. And other times when I do it, everything's perfectly fine. Um, I'm not sure why it's doing that and it's done that since the day I've got it. Um, it is a cheap mic. I may have go ahead and get a a more expensive one, see if that works later. But hopefully, if I keep checking this, everything will work out better. Anyway, some life updates. We got back from Washougal a couple weeks, or I got back from Washougal a couple weeks ago. Chris didn't go with. We are going to head back to Washougal because Chris wants to go and spend, um, you know, spend some time there. So we're going to go back for about a week and a half uh, on Sunday. Um, so I thought I'd better get this video up now um, with. Uh, you know, my stitching updates, haul, and um, whatever else is going on. Anyway, um, I let's see what's going on. Um, I've been doing some canning the past couple weeks. Every time I get in a, a, you know, a load of veggies or a fruit, I try to get some canning done. I've had a lot of, um, a lot of fruit and a lot of summer squash. I've been pickling summer squash. I really enjoy yellow squash that way. Um, so I've got about 25 pints done now and um, also been doing some pickle beets, which I love. Um, and also pickled eggs, the pickle beet eggs. It's an Amish recipe that I found online and um, it's just is really yummy if you like pickled, pickled eggs. Um, to me, these are fabulous. And I can link the uh, recipe below. And uh, at the beginning of the video, I had uh, shown some pictures of um, our backyard and the fruit trees and the, and, um, the squash. And um, here I'll show you some pictures of uh, my canning and what I've done. Anyway, um, last... This last Tuesday, uh, school started for most of the kids here in Utah, and my middle daughter is a, uh, she was a sixth grade teacher for years, but she's now an instructional coach uh, to interns and new teachers at her school, as well as uh, kind of a go-between between, between the principal and uh, the teachers, and um, anyway, she got to move to a brand new school. Um, this has been in the works for a while. Their old school was built in 1954, Hillcrest. Um, it was getting some age issues, ones that, you know, were going to take a while to, to, I mean, it would have taken a lot of upkeep to, and updating and reconstruction to fix it. Also, the school is located right on a busy highway on um, one side of it, and they've had some incidences with um, accidents and um, got to be where they had to put up a brick wall and that, you know, to keep cars from who are driving recklessly to smash into the playground. And so that was worrisome. So um, the choice was made that the school would be shut down and um, that they were built, would build a new school. So the new school was being built the last few years and um, they had their last um, last time at Hillcrest in May, which was sad for Julie. Being She had been in that school since she was an intern and a teacher 15 years ago, and it was hard for her. But now she's pretty excited. Um, below, I'm going to show you some pictures of the brand new school, which is totally amazing, amazing, amazing.
amazing. Anyway, um, she ha uh, gets a chance to work at this brand new school um, with the teachers, with the students. She has her own office. Um, it's two-story. They have a beautiful view, as you can see from the pictures. Um, the kids have a beautiful view, and the teachers do too. And um, she is just uh, really excited about her new year. I talked to her yesterday, and things are going really well. Some craziness, but um, that's to be expected. Um, two, two students got lost on the first day, and um, that was a little scary, but within 10 minutes, they found him. Um, a little bit scarier was one of the poor um, uh, guards that takes the kids across the school guards that takes the kids across the uh, street. He started getting dizzy and um, he had to sit down. And so the paramedics had to come and Julie had to go out and guide the kids across the street as they were trying to worry with the um, um, with the guy, you know, and and see if he was all right. Um, but he seems to be fine. Um, so anyway, the perils of uh, a brand new school and uh, the first week of school, which I'm sure you've heard from um, other people on how wonderful that can be. Um, and so before I head back to Washugo, I'll let you know what's going on with uh, some of the stitchy, stitchy stuff I've been up to. Um, two things beforehand, um, I've been participating in um, the Instagram um, hashtag common threaded stitcher. Um, that was started by several of uh, several floss tubers and instigated, I believe, by Kia B and um, Tech Guy in the Hive. Um, it's been really fun for this month of uh, August. Um, we had questions that we had to answer, threads that we had to answer to see if we could uh, get to know um, other floss tubers and other Instagram um, stitchers in our lives and uh, I've been really enjoying it. It's been lots of fun. I have missed a couple and then I just took off from the next day because um, you know because of trying to catch up I just decided it was a little easier just to to go on to the next day and some of them have been hard to um, answer. Some I just uh, decided well I better be nice here and just say uh, I can't decide. <laughs> because there are so many, so many good people out there, so many projects that I love, so many um, uh, uh, favorite floss tubers, favorite um, things I've stitched, favorite threads, favorite um, tools, just, just a lot of fun that they've been doing and I appreciate that thread and been enjoying it a lot and plan on keeping going till the end. Uh, I was trying to do Arbitrary August <laughs> That didn't work too well. It worked good when I was up in Washington, in Washigal. I did what I called an away arbitrary August. And with the projects I had up there, I spun my uh, tiny decisions wheel and did do my projects that um, came up. But when I got back to, to Lehigh, um, I got busy and involved in doing other things and also got kind of taken away by uh, a couple projects that, well, one project I needed to do for a smalls exchange, another project that I had wanted to do for a long time, and then also got, got back involved in my last stitch nine, which I really got um, excited about working on again. So Arbitrary August is out the window. I did do about 10 days of it, 12 days of it, so um, not as good as last year. I did the whole 30 days, but I am excited about what I'm working on now. So anyway, I'm going to go on and, and uh, let you know what, uh, what my stitching has been this last two weeks. Um, of course, my last Stitch 9 Challenge piece, Childhood Sisters. I've been working on that quite a bit. And um, here's what I've accomplished so far in the last two or three weeks, some in Washington and uh, some here in Lehigh. So I almost have the whole border finished. Finished all the flowers and the stems. 
a little bit of back stitching that I started doing, but not much. I just wanted to get the border done and the flowers. So anyway, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, a lot of it's getting done. Um, this next week when I'm in Washington, I'm going to finish this border up. I'm going to do my back stitching and see how much I can do. Um, but one thing that I think I'm going to wait on, I'm going to do all the back stitching up to one point and um, to where I only have like I would say like an hour's worth of back stitching done I mean to do and then I am going to take it to the Midwest cross stitching retreat and put my last few back stitching stitches in as I'm at the retreat and uh, then I'm going to have the finish at the retreat and tell Michelle I finished the last stitch nine at her retreat so I thought that would be fun to do. So I'm going to try to get all the back stitching done. Uh, we'll see how I do this next week in, in Washougal. Um, I'm pretty sure that um, I'll get the back stitching done around the, the border and then I'm going to move on I think to the flowers next and get a lot of that done and then move on to the last of the lettering, the back stitch on that. We'll see how I do. Probably depends on how tired I get of back stitching which um, I love the looks of it, but I get a little bored with it after a while and have to move back to regular crosses. And I know a lot of you are that way too, so we'll see how I do. But I'm going to leave a little tiny bit of backstitching till the retreat in October and finish it there. Okay, uh, for Away Arbitrary August, I did get a little bit done. Uh, the wheel pulled up uh, Pumpkinville by Frosted Pumpkin. So I did start the third block. That's not the greatest, that's only March, but I did do some on it, as you can see. This is being stitched on a 28 count, um, picture this plus heroic, and uh, with the called for DMC threads. And I do like the um, fabric with it, it's, it's really, I think, looking nice with the colors. So that was picked a little bit for Arbitrary August. I also worked on um, the Tiny Axe Wheel. Also pulled up Words to Live By, actually a couple times. Um, this is not all of the squares, of course. They're, they're through all the way August. But um, this is a copy I have of uh, the first couple months. And I did end up, the last time I worked on this, the only thing that was done was uh, down there in the middle, the fall, fall for follow and just some of that blue and that green. So since then, um, the couple days I had to do it, I finished almost the whole second block. Let me see if I can put something behind here. Because since this is a dark, no, that's a little better. This is a navy blue 18 count Ada, and it is absolutely beautiful. But when you're looking at it um, with the light coming through the window, it uh, does have, you can see through it, so it doesn't look as good. So the paper mix, putting it on the back makes it look a little better. Um, I really, really love the navy blue on this. I think it's looking really, really pretty, and I love the colors. So I got almost the whole block done with my app, um, choosing it a couple days. That's on uh, with the, it's that's with the call for colors also, and navy blue 18 count Ada. The one that got pulled the most with my away arbitrary August was a peacock's garden. This is a picture of some of the blocks um, as it's again it's a mystery sampler by linen and threads and um, not all the uh, blocks have been released. So this one I got a chance to um, finish the second block and start some on the third. Because I think I picked this if I remember three or four times uh, the wheel picked it. So that second block is done with all the back stitching, as well as the start of the third, which is going to be swans. Mr. Peacock got done quite a while ago. 
This is being stitched on 28 count uh, ivory jobelin and even weave. And the DMC color on this is 3765, which is what I'm planning on using for the entire piece. It's kind of a dark peacock color. So more of that got done in Washington when I uh, did my way arbitrary August. When I got back here, I realized, I think second or third day after I gotten some canning done, that I had a small that I needed to finish, I mean a small that I needed to start to do for one of the retreats. And um, you know, typical me, I'm going, oh wonderful. So I started going through my fabric and my patterns and um, I came up with this which I'm going to do. I probably will only have time to do one of the smalls on this. We'll see how I do. It's farm farm Okay, Colette, you can talk. It's Farmyard Parade by Brenda Gervais. I'm sure there's tons of you that have done this or want to do it because everybody loves Brenda Gervais. And I'm no exception. I enjoy her patterns too. So I chose to do um, the lady first. If I get her done and get around to doing the guy, I will also do that. But there's no guarantee of that with my traveling schedule and stuff, I may only get the lady done. I found some uh, 40 count Nantucket brew. Um, Shakespeare's Peddler dyed it. It called for R&R, &R, uh, I know wait, it called for weeks uh, Confederate Gray, which I did not have in the 40 count. So I opted to use this um, Nantucket brew 40 count and I think it's working out pretty good for the colors. And I finished um, the chickens and uh, some of the flowers, which is all the left side of the pattern. As you can see, I've still got the lady to do with all of her, all of her um, threads and then the other flowers. But I'm on my way with it and, um, you know, I for sure, for sure should get, get it done and of course finish it up. Probably just as a pillow with my time frame. It seems like that's all I ever have time time for. But anyway, I do like it and I like the colors on it. So anyway, I worked on that for like several days. Put it aside to go back on the um, stitch nine because I really wanted to get the border done. or almost done. And I also had been um, really, really, really excited to start this other piece and I had, when I was at StitchCon, I picked up um, some of uh, Lisa Leslie Hurley's Under the Seas Fabrics, an opalescent that I liked called um, Angelique, a 32 count linen. And I had it in mind for a pattern online. And um, there's been some of you out there that have uh, been working, um, Heather um, at Confetti Stitcher, Candy Askins, um, Candy Stitches, um, have been working or are going to work on um, uh, this pattern um, uh, designer. Um, she's called Pretty in Pink, I believe. And if that's different, I will um, put it below. And she does patterns from, um, she designs patterns off of Hannah Alexander's Mucha Princess patterns. And she does it for all the Disney princesses. And um, so, you know, different people have worked on, you know, like uh, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, and um, I've always loved Merida, and the um, reason why is because I like to do archery. I'm not very good at it, but I do enjoy it. And of course, Merida is a, a very good archer. And so I decided to pick up to buy, finally, the Mucha, since I had my um, um, fabric from Under the Sea, I decided to pick up the um, and buy the Mucha Merida pattern from Pretty in Pink. And I started that, got pretty excited and started it. And so, you know, not a whole lot is done. Merida, of course, has her red hair, her bright red hair. Um, and I've started working on her hair there at the top in the middle. This is going to be a very big pattern. If you go on to Confetti Stitcher, um, 
she's almost done with hers and um, it goes practically all the way down to the bottom of the fabric so you have to have a lot of fabric it's a full coverage piece but a little different than like uh, Hades, um because it's like a person but full coverage sort of more like a one of the um, uh, Mirabilia ladies but a little different from that too it will have beads like the mirror ladies too as I continue and um, also um, metallic threads and I do have a picture of it online I will get that right now so uh, here is the picture of um, Merida oh golly that glare with the window but you can kind of see she starts out at the top with like brighter red hair and then works on down to the hair gets a little lighter so anyway that's that's the pattern I'm doing so um, those are the things I've been working on this last couple weeks for stitching related and um, I believe I got them all um, I'll let you I'm gonna let you see now what I've been working on as far as my lace goes been going to my lace group last week I didn't get a chance to do it this week um I had a eye doctor appointment and um, you know they dilate your eyes and check them and I was on the same day as my lace and I realized I could barely get home drive home and I thought much less do any lace or stitching so Tuesday was kind of a lost day and so I didn't get to lace that day but I did do it the last week um, so anyway um, pretty happy still working on this Russian rooster um, before I only had just a few of these fillings done now I finished all the fillings here all these like um, windmills windmill fillings so the next thing I'll be doing is starting on this pinwheel right here by itself I'll work on this and then I'll go up and start the top here put the eye in on the on the rooster and then work down so he's coming along no bobbins on right now because I finished up that whole um, you know um, windmill section and uh, sewed it off so I'll have to sew on my pair of bobbins for the next thought I'd show you some um, Russian patterns in this book and how like colorful they can be um, this is the front of a, a Russian Russian lace book and um, you can pretty much do whatever you want as far as the colors and that's what's really fun and also the types of uh, the types of um, lace that you can do too this is my rooster there they're on that side and there's a parrot so this is how they opted to do my rooster um, there's a parrot there and his different fillings they like to do animals lots of types of animals and things but they also like to do people see this little gardener and the wheelbarrow they like to use leaves which are right right here as well as different windmills pinwheels for the fillings and all kinds of colors this has so many pretty patterns in it here's a cat and here's a hat I think that's exceptionally pretty especially with the different color leaves in the ribbon part of the hat and here we've got some houses or castles it's probably more like a castle with the fillings there's a house these fillings can be I love them and I hate them um, they give so much um, individuality to these pieces but they take a lot of extra design work and and figuring out how you're going to um, manipulate them and work them through the pieces 
So to tell you the truth, I, I, I love Russian lace and I hate Russian lace. No, I dislike Russian lace. I love to pick out my colors and do like, for example, on this car to do all the tape lace, which is all the outline of the car. I'm not as uh, crazy about figuring out my um, uh, fillings, but when they get done, they're so beautiful. There's a person, probably it looks like a soldier actually. So it's kind of a love-hate relationship. Here's a duck. There's another bird. They can make them look just so, so pretty. Here's a rabbit. And here's a leaf, which is real pretty because they use all different kinds of fillings in the leaf. So anyway, original lace is real, real fun lace. So anyway, that's my lace section um, for this time. So now I'm going to move on to haul, and um, I do have some haul. Um, so I showed you my haul from um, um, Acorns and Threads and uh, my haul from, from uh, Lace Convention already. But when I got home, Chris goes, oh, you've got all these packages. And so some of them were things I, I ordered um, many moons ago uh, because it would take a while. Um, it was a sale item. It was going to take a while for it to get here and be done. And others were things that I ordered while I was gone. So anyway, I'm going to start out first. One, two, three stitch. Boy, it sucks you in all the time. And my... Um, um, issues with one, two, three stitch too, I have to, I try to stay away from them is because they're like 10 minutes away from me. So I could just order every week and just drive there on my way to, to lacing or on my way to stitching with somebody, you know, once or twice a week. And I could order all kinds of stuff to where I have no money left at all. So anyway, I try to avoid it, but every now and again, I get sucked in. So, um, they were having sales, you know how they do every week. They have sales on things. And I got sucked in on some of the sales. One week they had sales on kits. Not every kit, but on like selected kits. Um, and I believe they were fantasy related, if I remember right. Um, this was a few weeks ago. And I, so I found a couple kits that I had been eyeing before. And since they were kits, they were way lower in price. And I felt like it was my best opportunity, other than maybe finding them like you know, on a stash on load for really cheap. But other than that, this was, was my best um, way of getting them. So anyway, I'll show you the couple kits I got. One's a Riolis kit, and um, it's a fantasy village. It has all the threads. I don't want to take these out because since they're kits, they can't be sealed back up again. Um, I really liked this kit when I saw it the first time. Um, it's actually a Russian Riolis, um, and um, it has all the little houses, like in a little uh, fairy village, and the trees and the flowers and everything. I just thought that was so cute. Um, I think they just call it fairy village. Um, I'll probably, it's a 10 count, which is pretty big, uh, Zweigart Ada. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I don't know if they wanted it to have like a bigger look or what. I may start it on the 10 count. Um, I've worked on 10 count before with my uh, preschooler Santas and it gives it kind of a cool look. So maybe I'll start it on that and see how it, um, how it works out. And, um, you know, see how it looks. If not, I'll, I'll start it on a, on a uh, linen or even weave. And, um, and this has a woolen and acrylic yarn, so 29 colors. It should end up being really pretty. The other one I got was a Dimensions Gold Kit, so I got it for a good price. And it's called Woodland Enchantress. I really had liked this one, and um, I think that's so pretty. Of course, it has all the threads and the um, Ada. I'm not sure again. I'll probably pull out the Ada on, in this and uh, you know, do it on a linen or even weave. So 
so that was when they had the, the fantasy sale kits. Um, at the same time, they were having a clearance on some items, so I also got a, a Little House Needleworks on clearance, which I had enjoyed. I'd seen other people um, uh, stitching this. It was called the, it's called the Counting House. I'm sure many of you have seen it. But on clearance, I got it for just a really, really good price. Pro probably as good as Stash Unload. So, um, you know, I hadn't bothered buying it up to now, but I decided that I would do it. Love those sheepies, just like Melanie of Yarns and Threads. Um, a week or so later, they also had a sale on um, Little Dove Designs, which I do like. And they also had, excuse me, they also had a, a sale on, oh, wait a minute, I forgot to do one other for the fantasy. They actually had a fantasy, um, they also had other things besides kits on sale that were fantasy related. And I do like Sarah patterns. This one's called Favol, Favolet. Some of you, I think, have seen the, the quilting and stitching party. That was not on sale, though I hope to pick that up sometime on sale. But they have this um, fairy tale, which maybe favole means fairy tale. As you can see, it's got like uh, castles and princesses and the pumpkin from um, um, Cinderella and the three little fairies from Sleeping Beauty and they got Snow White and the dwarves and then the spinning wheel. I just love this. Love this, love this. So I picked up that pattern um, on sale. I've got to get all my thoughts together here for which ones were for which sales. So. And also some were given, there was some uh, of my haul that was given to me too. Anyway, there were little dove patterns on sale, which I like the little dove patterns. Not all of them were on sale, but some were. Um, I picked up um, Spring Awakening. They kind of have a, um, a country cottage, little house feel to them. I like this one with, uh, again, the sheepies, the ducks, the umbrellas, and the, and the uh, rain. The little birds, the tulips. And then also got Summer Blooms. With all the fun summertime stuff like uh, playing in the beach, sunflowers, beehives, ice cream, sunshine. Really enjoyed that. And then they also had um, a sale on um, cross stitch antiques patterns. And um, I would have bought more, but again, I couldn't do it money wise. But um, I did uh, choose one. Um, Lisa Kindred Stitcher has, um, I believe, one or two of these. I was watching her sampler video. And Brenda at Hamwork Maniac is, is also working on one right now on a sale can't remember the names of the ones they have and I don't think they're the same as this one but um, I kind of enjoyed this one it's called um, Suffer the Little Children um, it's an antique reproduction sampler by Cross Stitch Antiques and it's one of their um, Headmistress head sampler series um, let me see if they've got a better picture or no yeah, this is not a large sampler um, it's only like 150 by 150, so it won't take too long to do. Um, it's mostly um, letters and with the saying of Suffer the Little Children, which is Suffer little children and come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And then the girl's name, Anna Jones. So, really like that. And then a long time ago I ordered, and these came in like before I, <laughs> before I headed off to um, convention and my genealogy, family history search trip, and acorns and threads, everything else. Um, I, I enjoyed watching Friday Off the Grid um, and Carolyn, um, you know, her stitching, um, stitching floss tubes. 
and she loves to stitch uh, landmark tapestries and charts. So they were having a sale on uh, some of them, not all of them, but a few of them. So I decided to uh, purchase a couple that were on sale. I purchased um, Gilt Sky, which is, this is part of the Celtic Gilt uh, Pillows collection. As you can see, they have other, other Celtic um, patterns. The patterns are so beautiful. Full coverage, but not too large, and um, I love Celtic designs. But they also had one here that they called a um, Tapesta Pillows Collection. Um, I thought it could be so cool for um, a uh, Navajo look, and I love um, Navajo colors of uh, turquoises, creams, blacks. So I'm going to kind of change out the colors in this. But this is part of the Tapas to Pillows collection. I know Carolyn is, um, uh, Caroline of, um, is, is doing this. Why can't I think of the name of your floss tube, Caroline? I guess it's just off the grid, I hope. Anyway, I know she is doing one of these. I um, can't remember which one, though. But anyway, I picked the RGS one. thought this would lend itself really well to like a um, Navajo colors, turquoise colors. So I got both of those from Landmark. Was enabled by you, Caroline. Thank you so very much. If you watch this video, which you probably don't, but um, I just want to let you know that you enabled me just like uh, 123 enables me. And then I got a couple patterns given to me by a good friend. She does a lot of needlepoint and, um, and beading, and we see each other, but she does stitch too. Um, and we see each other usually during beading every week and um, and sometimes doing stitching once or twice a month. Mary Jackson, thank you so much. I know you watch my floss tube. So I'm shouting you out, even though you are not on Instagram and you are not on Facebook and you are not a floss tuber. Um, but she gave me these two patterns, the Stone Street Stitch Works, Where Liberty Dwells. And I really like this pattern. I love patriotic patterns have some fun ideas with that. Love the houses. So thank you, Mary, for that one. And also she gave me this Sam Sarah one. I will always be a wildflower. I really like that one, too. So thank you so much, Mary. That was really sweet of you. Uh, so now I'm going to go on to... Oh, yes my picture this plus haul order um crazy annie she does a um sale on picture this plus fabric once a year and um so she we pick what um what ones we want and we get 20 percent off i believe the sale is in june if you go onto crazy annie's website and keep track of things and be on her newsletter you probably find out about it um every year i try to buy like a sampling of different colors so then i just you know, I have them there in case I want to use them for something. So this year I got um, four um, quarter yards of um, different different uh, colors and then one half yard. So here they are. I'm going to pull them over. I got a 32 count linen confetti and we'll see how these um, look this is 32 count linen confetti I think it's pretty true to color it might be a little more yellowish yeah so I put it closer it doesn't look as yellow if I put it back farther you can see it much better this way this is true to color it's a lot of yellow and greens that's confetti and I really liked that color you know you don't always know when you look online but I have not been totally disappointed you know I mean every color I've gotten when I've done the sale has been you know really fun so I've really enjoyed them and I will use them for something okay this color is um, jazz 32 count quarter yard and again holding it back it gives you more of a, a true color of it um, it's got uh, blues, a medium color blue with like purple 
in it. Purple splashed throughout it. If you put it closer, it lines up way too much. So that's jazz. I think another nice color. I also have um, 32 count, quarter yard of carnival. Carnival is a real pretty color. And holding it back farther shows there's more justice to it. It's uh, pinks with yellows, um, purples, a little bit of green, all kinds of colors in this. It's probably why it's called carnival. There's only just a little bit of yellow and green in it. Again, putting it closer really doesn't do. Holding it farther back is really the true color. Another nice one. And then um, I also got feldspar. Quarter yard. Feldspar, this actually isn't showing the colors on it quite as much as what it really is. And closer is not either. This feldspar actually does have the browns in it and the grays, but it's much um, bluer and purplier in real life, not so brown. So, and that just really, I can't catch it with that. But it really is um, kind of blues browns grays and then i got a, a full half yard of wren which um, for picture this plus it's a it's a good um color to use for like um, um samplers and other things i didn't get a really fine count because i have a lot of 40 count lakeside linen so i opted to get a 32 count for this wren because i have made samplers in 32 count Again, we'll try to hold this up back farther, and that really is a more um, of the correct color. You know, it's got the uh, tans, a little bit of golden brown splashing in it, um, a little bit of light cream. Just a real nice overall, overall um, linen for samplers. It's a little bit more like gently dyed more like lakeside um you know some picture of this plus is is very strong in its looks in its colors but wren tends to be like um a very nice subtle um subtle dyeing so so anyway those came in um i ordered those back in june and they just barely came in which usually you do have to wait about two and a half months or so um for for the sale at picture of this plus Okay, I'm going to move on to plans, and um, my plans kind of are the same as what I've been doing. A little different. Um, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm taking off for Washougal with my husband Chris, so I'm going to take um, childhood sisters with and um, do as much fact stitching as I can this coming week on it when I get sick of it. Uh, I'm going to move on to farmyard parade. I want to get that finished, so I want to work on that this week and get it finished. So when I come back, I can. Um, fully finish it. And then I'm also going to bring along for in the car um, Peacock Garden, um, you know, one of my mystery cells, because being only one um, color, I don't have to change the colors out all the time, and it's a large count, so it's just very easy and simple to do in the car. And when I get sick of doing the other ones, I will. Um, I can just work on that. So. Um, I want to remind you all, if any of you are just joining me for the first time um, on my floss tube, I want to thank you. Um, really want to thank you. I've gotten several subscribers in the last month, and um, I'm thankful for you. Um, I uh, just let you know that um, I'm a traveling stitcher, and I'm also a stitcher who kind of changes her mind at times and likes to do different types of patterns. I'm very eclectic. I as you can see from some of the things I purchased to some of the patterns I work on. It can be anywhere from Sam Sarah to um, a 40 count uh, Sabre's Praise, um, which did not get any more done on it, unfortunately. I need to start working on it again when I get home. I, I'm not going to take it with me 
because I won't have a Sunday to work on because Sunday I'll be traveling and I'm not going to work on it in the car. And the following Sunday I will may be traveling home, so it's not a good time to take it. Anyway, um, I do like a whole, you know, a whole span of patterns, as you can see from um, from what my haul is. Anyway, if that interests you and you also like a little bit of lace thrown in, I love my lace making. It's my other passion. And if you like to see my lace, um, you know, tell your friends and, um, you know, subscribe and uh, hit the subscribe button and hit the notice button. And before I forget, um, I, for anybody who's new joining me, um, I have a um, giveaway. And it is a Hands Across the Sea sampler. This was generously given to me by a, a good stitchy friend. And um, she bought two copies. Um, we plan on doing a sale at the beginning of the year and um, of this. And uh, I call it the Quilted Grass Sampler, as you can see, because the grass kind of looks quilted with all the different colors. Love those animals and love that grass. It's my quilted grass sampler. I also love the um, flowers and things. I am not a fan and never have been of Adam and Eve. Here I am, I'm a church person and I don't like Adam, Adam and Eve. But I don't like them on um, the samplers. For some reason they just bug me. I don't know what it is. And it's not because they're not wearing clothes. It's just because um, I just... I just don't like the figures themselves. They usually just look kind of corny to me. So I think I'm going to end up changing, putting some other motifs on the other side instead of Adam and Eve. At least, at least that's my plan. So I don't know why they just always, almost anyone I've ever seen in any pattern just looks really kind of corny looking to me. And, and I don't know if that means anything. I mean, I guess here I'm getting off on a tangent, but I don't mind if the little animals look all kind of like, not like real little animals. Or even that little lady there who's a little shepherdess. But I guess with Adam and Eve, I feel like it should look more real life, and they never seem to really look real life to me. Anyway, so I'm going to get on to what I'm supposed to be saying with this, and I'm giving this as a giveaway. And the only thing that I need to have you do besides commenting um, for the comments is let me know if you finished any um, samplers at all and tell me why you like samplers what's your reasoning there's lots of different reasons to like a sampler but um, let me know why you would like to stitch a sampler and what particular thing you like about it the most and I'm gonna hold out on this for another couple weeks before I give it away to give everybody a chance because these um, hats patterns are you know pretty coveted and um, love to have somebody somebody get it so I'm going to give you a chance to continue on a little so anyway I'm ending this video now probably ended up being too long with all my going off on tangents but I appreciate all you guys being here with me um, thanks so much um, thanks to all my stitching friends um, here in Utah in Oregon and Washington, love you. In Idaho, love you. Um, in uh, California, love all you guys there. Um, and all the ones that I've met everywhere else. Um, in Minnesota, in Ohio, um, all the other states, love you guys so, so much. Um, I hardly give any shout outs and I realize that I haven't done that. I'm going to try to, um, uh, I always seem to forget it. And uh, so maybe this time I'll just say, since I started Amucha uh, Princess, um, go take a look at Heather Confetti Stitches um, Floss 2. And she's from Southern California. I met her through the retreat there. And um, she does a floss tube. And her floss tube, she has a beautiful, beautiful um, princess, Mucha Princess, that you can take a look at, as well as um, other really nice patterns. She does a vlog style. So that'll be my um, um, shout out for today because I can't, my brain is not uh, functioning well. But I'm going to write down some other shout outs um, as I go on because there's so many of you who do, do such a great, great job. Anyway, I um, want you all to remember um, just the beauty out there. 
Um, our world is so beautiful. Um, beautiful um, out in all the places you travel. Beautiful in your home. Beautiful stitchers out there. Remember all the beauty that you see. Um, appreciate that beauty. And I love you all, and I'll see you again in a couple weeks. Bye, everybody.